Have you ever noticed that Blackbeard wears the same exact type of hat that Robin's mom was shown wearing? Oda's about to show us why Blackbeard is the real demon of Ohara. And when I say demon, I'm not talking about a metaphorical sense like Robin, but a literal demon. And I promise it proves why Blackbeard has multiple devil fruits, why he's able to read the poneglyphs, and why he's based on a creature that famously killed a quote unquote earthquake monster. The revelations you're about to experience today is going to change how you see Blackbeard in One Piece forever. I'm about to feed you the red pill behind the truth of Blackbeard and there's no turning back. By the end of this video, you are going to walk away with your jaw on the floor, so be prepared. Blackbeard is literally a demon and Oda is hiding this from you. To get this all started, there's loads of context clues Oda's given us to uncover the secrets behind Blackbeard. I'll be mentioning all the obvious ones, but most importantly, the obscure ones that you have to read in between the lines to understand. But before we jump into it, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos like this. So to start off, Robin's flashback holds a lot of key details, not only about the history of the world, but Blackbeard himself. In chapter 392, it was said that the Void Century is considered a taboo subject. And this dialogue sticks out to me, since we know from Sengoku, that Zebek was also interested in taboo subjects. Knowing Oda's writing style, I'd be led to believe one of these taboo subjects that Zebek was interested in was learning about the Void Century. And by extension, knowing Blackbeard has many ties to Zebek, Blackbeard himself would be interested in taboo subjects. So not only is Oda tying Blackbeard to Zebek, but now he's tying Blackbeard to the interests of Ohara. And then in chapter 393, Robin has interesting dialogue that further helps us connect Blackbeard with Ohara. Robin basically infers that archaeological research requires a person to go out to sea like her mother Olvia. And I think that's really, really important because we already know that Blackbeard is interested in archaeology. If you refer back to SBS Volume 81, Oda wrote how Blackbeard's favorite hobby is historical research. And then later in Volume 88, Oda said that if Blackbeard wasn't a pirate, he'd be an archaeologist. So by Oda's own words, it would make sense that Blackbeard is narratively tied to not only O'Hara, but the research ships that left the island. And what further solidifies the idea that Blackbeard is connected to O'Hara is something you overlooked. Throughout Robin's flashback, Oda made it a point to give a ton of characters a cowboy hat as headwear. Robin eventually wore one, Jaguar wore one, random civilians wore them, hell even CP9 members were wearing the cowboy hats. But the one fact that excites me is Olvia herself didn't wear a cowboy hat and instead wore the same exact type of hat that Kid Blackbeard was seen to wear. I strongly believe this is Oda's way of foreshadowing a connection between Blackbeard and Olvia and for some reason he chose to symbolize this connection with a hat. And what makes this even crazier is Throughout Robin's flashback, Oda repeatedly drills into the reader's head how Olvia's research team was captured six years prior to the Ohara incident. Like seriously, over and over and over again, he reminds you that it was six years ago specifically, which just so happens to be the same year that Blackbeard begged Whitebeard to let him on the ship. Knowing Oda's habits of making time-sensitive events important, I believe that Olvia wasn't the only person who escaped the capture, but so was Blackbeard. And this would explain why Blackbeard has that beat up hat. He got it from his mother or father that died during the capture. It would also explain why Blackbeard was labeled as an orphan, because every time those research ships got captured, the researchers would end up being killed. And yes, I understand, it's heavily implied that Blackbeard was born in a snow country, because in Odin's flashback, Kid Shanks and Buggy talked about how Blackbeard has never slept in his life. And this could be easily connected to the dialogue from Drum Island arc, where Sanji says that people from snow countries never sleep. Ah, what? All that with the fact that Ohara is not a snow country would seem to imply that Blackbeard wasn't born on Ohara specifically, but instead a snow country that the research team visited. But it's the same difference. The research team that left Ohara knew how to read and study poneglyphs, and they went to a snow country, and that's how Blackbeard was born. Now, another interesting explanation about Blackbeard and his family lies in chapter 393. We are shown that Olvia's husband, aka Robin's dad, had wishes about learning the poneglyphs. But this scene in particular is important because it shows shows how Olvia was not the leader and the captain of the research ships. And in fact, there's tons of members in that team, which leaves plenty of room for Oda to make a member of that research team a Marshall D family member. Now also in chapter 393, Robin claims that her mother Olvia is learning about the Void Century during her travels around the ocean. Seeing how Blackbeard could easily be tied to that team, this would imply that Blackbeard knows a little bit about the Void Century himself. If he's so deeply interested in taboo subjects just like Zebek, I'd imagine that Blackbeard and Zebek would be fascinated 
made over the Yami Yami no Mi due to its history from the Void Century. Personally, I don't think that's a reach at all, considering that Blackbeard is interested in history and archaeology, so maybe he discovered the Yami Yami no Mi due to Void Century research. And the last piece of information for chapter one of two for this grand reveal about Blackbeard actually has to do with Luffy. So Luffy's based on Hanumanji, aka Hanuman, which is a monkey god in Hinduism. This was confirmed in chapter 1048 when Luffy did an attack to defeat Kaido called Bajrang Gun. And Bajrang is another name for Hanuman, the monkey god. But more importantly, in Road to Laugh Tale Volume 4, Oda literally has notes calling Luffy monkey god Hanuman. So from all the details we talked about in chapter 1, we can easily tie Blackbeard to the greatest enemy Hanuman ever faced, Thrisidas. Thrisidas was a three-headed Ashura that fought Hanuman in a great battle. And Ashuras are already a thing in One Piece anyways, as seen by Zoro's Ashura former attack. But it's important to clarify that an Ashura is another way of saying demon. Now you know how I said that Thrisidas is a three-headed Ashura, aka a three-headed demon? Each head actually has their own specific name and their own specific function for the body of Thrisidas. The first head was in charge of eating and drinking, and I believe Oda displayed this to us when we first met Blackbeard in Jaya's bar. The second head is in charge of observing surroundings, which I believe plays into Blackbeard being methodical. And the third and final head is in charge of reading the four Vidas, which is secret ancient text in Hinduism. I believe Oda's way of adding this to One Piece is by having Blackbeard being able to read the Poneglyphs. And this ties into everything we've said so far. Blackbeard clearly has a connection to Olvia and the research ships of Ohara. Now, the interesting thing about Three Sitters having three heads is it could correlate to Blackbeard having three personalities or three souls. And this would make sense because of details that we've seen in One Piece Magazine Volume 4, where Oda draws a shocked Ace seeing Blackbeard and his two sisters. This was concept art for Blackbeard and appeared to be scrapped, but I think Oda's idea was essentially to add two more souls to Blackbeard's already existing soul. And a lot of people would like to point out that Blackbeard's teeth changed from time to time, so that could be a factor in him having three souls, especially when you take into account what we already know about devil fruits. According to Jabra, once you eat a devil fruit, a devil inside of you begins fighting, which is why having two devil fruits should kill you. I believe what's implied here is because the typical person has one soul in their body to fight off one devil fruit. So if you had two souls, shouldn't you be able to fight off two devil fruits? Or even three souls, shouldn't you be able to fight off three devil fruits? Now I know this whole three souls thing is very vague right now, but I promise you by the end of this video, I'm going to give you concrete evidence why it's the case. And to quickly bring up, in chapter 394, it is said that the archaeologists of this world are actually demons who desire destruction, which is hilarious because if Blackbeard is based on three sedas, then one that makes him an archaeologist, two, he's a demon, and three, he wants to bring destruction to the world, which in my opinion is already very obvious. So when we have moments where they call Robin the demon of Ohara, I believe it's actually foreshadowing to Blackbeard because he will be the real, literal demon of Ohara. Oh yeah, by the way, tinfoil fun fact, Ohara's tree of knowledge is the same exact shape as the skull on Hachinosu Island, and has the same exact windows as the skull on Hachinosu Island. But with all that being said, Oda has a trend where he gets two famous figures in real life, mixes them together, and creates a One Piece character out of them. For an example, Oda used Sun Wukong and Hanuman to create the character of Luffy. Seeing how Blackbeard is not only important to the general plot, but also the second side of the shared coin with Luffy, I can see the same case being for Blackbeard. Meaning, Blackbeard is heavily inspired by two figures, and the first one was Hinduism's Three Sidas. But then that begs the question, who is the second inspiration? And can it answer why he has multiple devil fruits? The One Piece community is huge, and there's millions of fans around the world trying to decipher all the mysteries in the story. But one fan that needs their shine is Yasin B on Reddit. Due to their love for One Piece and all the historical research they did, I have a lot of groundbreaking truths I'm so excited to present to you today. So major shout out to Yasin B for some of these discoveries and work done on Blackbeard. So laughs in One Piece are super important, and they are represented by a character's devil fruit, assuming they have one. For an example, Whitebeard. <laughs> Gura da 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 is represented by him having the Gura Gura no Mi. Perona <laughs> is represented by her having the Horo Horo no Mi. And then you even have minor characters like Strusen. <laughs> Cuckoo Cuckoo Cuckoo, represented by him having the Cuckoo Cuckoo no Mi. But what about Blackbeard's laugh? <laughs> Not only is he one of the most iconic and important characters in the entire story, but he also has the most iconic laugh in all of One Piece. Following this pattern that Oda laid out, I'd be led to believe that Blackbeard's fruit would be the Ziha Ziha no Mi. But how could we make that make any sense? Well, in Chinese mythology, there's an insanely interesting creature known as the Baize. And the Baize was then adopted into Japanese mythology as well under the name 
name of Hakutaku. Now, if you take the two last letters of Baize and add it to the first two letters of Hakutaku, you end up with Zeha. So basically the same creature with two separate names would be the reason why Blackbeard's laughter is Zeha ha ha ha. Now, before you click off this video thinking it's a coincidence and I'm reaching, I suggest you buckle your seatbelts because all the facts and details behind the Baize is going to blow your mind. In Chinese mythology, the Baize is described as a tiger, sheep, and lion because it is a creature with three different faces. Comparing what the Baize is depicted as to Blackbeard's Jolly Roger, the similarities between the two is absolutely uncanny. They look way too similar and I could see Blackbeard crafting his flag to look this way because he ate the Hito Hito no Mi model Zeha. Do you see how this is coming together? And if you're still not convinced, that's fine. I have plenty more shocking details to talk about. Another interesting design of the Baize is the fact that it has several horns and each of the faces has three eyes. I find that to be important because One Piece already toyed around with the idea of people having three eyes, in this case, the three-eyed tribe. The special thing about the tribe is members have the ability to hear the voice of all things, which unlocks potential in reading the Poneglyphs. Even though the means of awakening the third eye is relatively unknown, it doesn't matter, the result is the same. Big Mom's daughter Pudding might be the only member we know about so far, but I can see Blackbeard once again being a hack by having a third eye. Not only would there be a narrative purpose for that, but it would also fit the Chinese legend of the Baize. Another groundbreaking fact about the Baize is it has three souls. And that's a long-running theory about Blackbeard, the idea that he is a character with three souls in his body. And we already explored that idea earlier, so I won't harp on it much longer. Another fact about Baize we can apply to One Piece doesn't only have to do with Blackbeard, but with Shanks as well. So as everyone knows, the scar that Shanks got was from a fight with Blackbeard that Shanks claims he was very careful in. He wasn't letting his guard down and is pretty much heavily implying that Blackbeard did something very unexpected that allowed him to scar Shanks. Now, a lot of people would attribute the scar that Shanks has to the claws that Blackbeard's been seen using, but I would have to disagree for a few reasons. In Odin's flashback, we saw a young Shanks and Buggy gossiping about Blackbeard, and at this point, Blackbeard already had those claws. So for those claws to somehow become a big factor in their fight many years down the line, it seems kind of odd to me. Not only that, but the claw's inconsistent seeing how sometimes it has three knives on it and sometimes it has four. Seeing how the claw isn't that strong of an argument, I believe the Baize having a tiger form could answer how Blackbeard managed to scar Shanks. By randomly switching into the tiger form, it would catch careful Shanks off guard, allowing him to scar the future emperor. Now the Baize also has physical features that are already present in current day Blackbeard, that being the swirly and curly beard that Blackbeard's rocking. Comparing the two side by side, it's definitely something that stands out to me and would make a lot of sense that Oda chose to give Blackbeard a beard like that if he did in fact have ties to Baize. Now the next detail had me absolutely sold on this idea, it was my absolute tipping point. According to Chinese mythology, Baize was described as killing an earthquake yokai, or in other words, an earthquake monster. This earthquake yokai was said to shake the earth when he was angry and wants to attack. The first thing that immediately came to your mind is the fact that Blackbeard killed an earthquake yokai already. In this case, the yokai was Whitebeard and he had this earthquake ability due to eating an earthquake devil fruit. So Blackbeard having a Baize devil fruit would relate to the legend by him killing an earthquake yokai known as Whitebeard. Now the legend of Baize has way more interesting details, but I need a second to collect myself because... <sighs> Now the meaning of Baize in Japanese kanji is White Marsh, which is actually the names of two different characters that related to each other, but one of them kills the other. In this case, it would be Whitebeard and Blackbeard. Not only is it in their beard nicknames, but it actually goes way deeper than that. So there's an actual pirate in real life that inspired the creation of Blackbeard, and his name is spelled as Edward Teach, but pronounced as Edward Thatch. The facts behind this matter is that Oda took this famous pirate and split him up into three different characters, Edward Newgate, Thatch, and Marshall D. Teach. Now remember, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because the White Marsh was known to kill someone related to him. So Oda portrayed this by having Blackbeard kill Whitebeard. And we're still not done, I have another cracked out detail about the Baize that actually correlates with Blackbeard's vast knowledge about the world. According to Chinese legend, Baize dictated to Huang Dai, a guide to the forms and habits of all 11,520 types of supernatural creatures in the world and how to overcome their hauntings and attacks. You're probably wondering why I'm bringing this up, you're probably wondering what this has to do with anything. Well. Remember how Blackbeard fought Ace? In that battle, Blackbeard mentions how he knows all forms of devil fruits from reading the devil fruit encyclopedia. Blackbeard is by Zhe, the Huang Dai guide in this case would be the devil fruit encyclopedia, and all those creatures, all those hauntings, all those attacks in the book would be the devil fruits in one piece. That's a little too ironic, huh? And this also ties into why Blackbeard and his crew have been chasing devil fruits this whole time. We see this over and over again, like the fact that Blackbeard was targeting the Yami Yami no Mi for many years, or even how they manipulated 
Absalom in order to get sure you the clear, clear fruit. To me, it seems very clear that this vast knowledge about devil fruits from Blackbeard derives from the Baize reading the Huang Dai guide. Now, the icing on the cake for this whole Baize theory is the idea of Blackbeard having three devil fruits by the time he fights Luffy. His Logia would be the Yami Yami no Mi, his Paramecia would be the Gura Gura no Mi, and his Zoan will be the Ziha Ziha no Mi, creating a pattern of three present in Blackbeard by having all three devil fruit categories. Oh my god. So what did we learn today? There is a 99.99999% chance that Blackbeard is a mix between three Sidas from Hindu mythology and Baize from Chinese mythology. If this theory video blew your mind, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos like this. And if you're interested in the secrets behind Mihawk, I have a video to my side you definitely gotta check out. But besides that, it's the Demon King and I'm signing out.